So the whole reason why I've even started this channel for was to document my journey through chiropractic school. So that way I can share my experience, that way you guys can learn from it. So whenever you start your own journey of going through school, you guys can maximize a very narrow window of time so that way you guys can strive to become the best doctors that you can possibly become. Right, and so with that being said, we're starting a kind of a new different format where I'm gonna be sharing a weekly vlog so that way you guys can see what I'm going through on a day-to-day -day basis. I feel like that'll be the best way to be able to document this experience of going through school so that being said I hope you guys enjoy it uh, let me know in the comments what you like what you don't like from it and what you guys want to see in this new weekly vlog series so enjoy and let's get right into it good morning good morning it is about 10 till 7 here just waiting in the parking lot about to start my day of classes starting at 7 o'clock uh, we got a quiz our first quiz really our first grade that we're getting in any of our classes now uh, in one of my clinical exam classes. And then after that, I got another quiz in one of my labs for muscle gait and posture analysis. So today's gonna be kind of an exciting day. It's always exciting to get the first quiz or first little mini test out of the way. Um, kind of sets the tone for how the rest of the quarter is gonna go. But after that, we got a long day of classes. I got classes until about five, and then we got our uh, x-ray uh, practice session that I go with, with Dr. Fox, who's the radiologist here on campus. And then after that, I'm gonna go back to the apartment, and we're gonna practice some analysis. We've got a few people that are gonna come over, and we're gonna go through practicing our analysis for Gonstead. So it's gonna be a full, fun-filled day, a lot going on, a lot happening. Um, still in shock about the whole Kobe thing that happened yesterday. Um, be honest, I've never cried about someone, about the death of someone that I never met. And that just says the legacy that Kobe had and the impact that he's had on my life. It's so sad. Just makes you think, you know, just hearts go out to all those who were involved. All right, the quizzes went well. Heading to uh, the library right now. We got to print off some paperwork. Uh, I'm also gonna print off some stuff for boards. I am trashing the last booklet that I had that I mentioned in the last video. It was just too complicated for me and so I'm doing more of a guided study. So that way I feel like it'll keep me more organized and more on track. So that way we crush this board exam, you know what I mean? Hello everyone, uh, we are heading back home now at the end of the day. It's about quarter after seven. So I had a really good day today, filled with classes and then I got a lot of schoolwork done and then we finished it off with the extra x-ray review session uh, with a radiologist, which is always one of my favorite things to do, especially to end my Monday, because I just, I love radiology. I can look at film for hours, and so it's always good to dissect difficult cases and to be able to just advance my radiology skills. So heading back to the apartment now, and then we are going to cap the night off by doing some analysis practice. So I got a few people come over, uh, and I'm gonna teach some analysis, and we're gonna get some extra practice in so it should be good hello everyone it is Tuesday afternoon here and speaking of practice we got Gonstead Club coming up here in a few minutes hence why I got on the Gonstead polo uh, tonight my group I'm gonna be teaching them the pelvic and lumbar analysis and then we're gonna get into refining the side posture setups. And then towards the end, if we have enough time, we'll even get into a little bit of case management uh, through x-ray and low back protocol. So it's gonna be a really great night at club. I think everyone's gonna learn a lot. Uh, it's been a long, really good day. It's a beautiful day outside. Uh, been going since about 7 a.m., so solid 10 hours of 10-hour day. 
Just getting some last minute work in here before uh, we go ahead and get ready for the club. All right guys, so we are back from club. It went really well. Uh, I love being able to teach other students and teach them new things uh, that I know is gonna make them better chiropractors. So it really motivates and continues to push me forward. And whenever I come home from the evening, I make it a routine that I get whatever work needs to get done, done for the night, right? I never wanna drag a lot of responsibility to the next morning or the next day. So what that looks like for me is whenever I come home, first things first is I wanna unwind for about 15 to 25 minutes. Typically I could be doing this by talking to family or a loved one, perhaps I'll be watching uh, some God said videos on YouTube, maybe reading. And so I'm spending my 15 to 20 minutes here sitting here talking to you guys, cause I love you guys. Other than that, my routine looks very similar than what it used to look like first quarter. I aim to prepare myself by getting my environment set in, right? I got some essential oils diffusing. I got my water. I got my little blue light blocking glasses. Nothing's changed, guys. So what I do first is I set my environment, triggering my mind that it is time to study. Getting your intention on why I'm studying. And I don't mean the why on, oh, I'm just going to study embryology tonight because I have my embryology midterm tomorrow. No, I mean, what is the bigger picture? What is the bigger why of your studying? Right? I'm in a new apartment now, but it's still the same old habits, right? And then I go into getting my work done. And one new thing that I have implemented is I always wanna go through and do a daily review of all my classes. It takes a little bit more time, but I just find that that extra little bit uh, of review really goes a long way for me. Like for me is I will go through my schedule for today and I will kind of just go from top to bottom. So from my earliest classes this morning and all the way back down to the evening classes, and I'll just do a quick review of the notes that I took. And this can take no more than 15 to 20 minutes for each class. And so I'm more of a kinesthetic learner, so I learn best by writing things down, by verbalizing things, by acting it out, um, by re-lecturing it is a big study strategy that works well for me. And so I'll go through my classes. So for today, I'd go through my special senses lecture. I would go through my clinical competency class that we had, which is essentially a combination of all of our basic science courses that we've had. And we get to take a competency exam that we're taking next week, which is going to be a prerequisite for us to get into the student clinic next quarter. And I'll go through my x-ray positioning lab and then special senses lab. And so that will review my classes for today. And then I will go through and study and do anything that I have to do for the following day. And again, that should take no more than 30 for the 45 minutes. Since I have a quiz tomorrow morning at 7 a.m., uh, I'll probably, it might take an hour to a little bit longer for me to just feel confident um, in that. Anyway, y'all, my 20 minutes is up. I love you guys, but I got to work. We'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Good morning, everybody. It is a little bit before 6.30 here. I am on campus, still dark outside. I got a meeting before my class starts here at seven, so I'm about to go in there. Um, I just wanna pop on, let you guys know what I got planned for the day. We got classes from seven to five. I have that quiz at 7 a.m. that I feel ready for, that I studied or reviewed for last night. Um, really big, I got a break from 11 to one. So I got a two hour break, which I usually don't have in my schedule. And so I'm definitely gonna maximize uh, this two hour break today. I think I'm gonna review a lot of my uh, clinical diagnosis classes. So going over ortho, neurodiagnosis, visceral diagnosis, and just really getting really good at a lot of the tests and a lot of the different orthopedic tests and things. So yeah, it's gonna be a really great day. Then we're gonna end the day with Amped Club. Uh, we're going over screenings, which is gonna be really cool because we just just got back from our screening event. We'll go ahead and cut to that. Let's go. So screenings are obviously very important, right? We're gonna get into a lot of detail about screenings, literally everything you guys are gonna to need to know, not just to set up a screening booth, not just some general guidelines, what you should say, but actually what exactly you guys need to do to get real results to be able to bring people into your practice and enjoy your practice. You guys may have noticed as they're standing up here on the stage and briefly talking a little bit about their technique, you notice a little bit different of a language and how they were explaining what they do, right? But the cool thing is that it's all chiropractic, right? And so, as you'll learn, it's that the, you know, the wording in which you describe what you do is very important. And that's gonna vary from how your technique, but it's also gonna vary in just how you communicate, right? Because communication is everything. I mean, your technique's amazing, and I highly encourage you guys to get involved in many technique clubs and really advance your technique skills. 
But what good is being great at side posture if you don't know how to communicate to people what in the heck you're doing to them, right? Doesn't matter because people don't understand chiropractic and it's our duty as chiropractors to educate them and explain to them that the body can heal themselves and how the service that we provide as chiropractors are very valuable to them, right? Sit down. Okay. You, know, you can sit, right, you can sit. All right, so let's see, last objection. So my last chiropractor hurt me. And so I personally don't really want to see a chiropractor again. Um, so I completely understand why you would have that um, objection to not want to go see another chiropractor again. However, the technique that we use in our office is very spe specific, very gentle, and very precise. Um, so we want to give you the best care possible. And so that's why we do several different testings to make sure that you're going to be as safe and give you the best care that we possibly can. Nice. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Let's go. That was absolutely amazing. I love that. And you guys will get this too. You guys will get this too. Now, I know the people in this room are going to be amazing adjusters, amazing chiropractors. Yo. Why? Because you guys, we got amazing techniques here representing us tonight. But also, we're going to be amazing communicators. And communication is everything, guys. A lot of times, when, a chiro when someone says that my last chiropractor hurt me, I mean, given did maybe the adjustment hurt him? May I mean, maybe. Could, could they have done something wrong? Maybe. What I more think it was is they didn't properly communicate. Perhaps it was something as simple as, you guys know this, first time you get adjusted, what do you normally feel like the next day? Sore. Well, pretty damn sore, right? So we know that, right? So maybe that's what happened. Maybe they're doing the right thing, but they didn't do something as simple as telling them they're gonna be sore the next day, and they get sore, and they think my chiropractor hurt me, and they go run and tell all their friends, and now chiropractic has a bad reputation. Communication is everything, guys. So this is why we train on these objections. You guys all crush this. Give a round of applause for them. Right? All right, so it is during my break now, and I'm in the tiniest little study room that I could possibly be in here in that library. This is literally it. And what I'm doing over my break is I'm going over my diagnosis class that I'm in. It's my clinical skills class. We're pretty much wrapping in and tying in together all of the diagnosis classes that we've had leading up to this point, including visceral physiology, orthopedic diagnosis, and neuro neurodiagnosis. So just combining those three together to really form a proper clinical physical exam. So what I'm doing now is I'm reviewing some of the new material that we're gonna go over for this week that we're required to know prior to entering uh, the class. And if I can give you guys a little bit of advice is whenever you guys take those diagnosis classes, really learn the material. So put the work in initially so that way whenever you go back through this stuff, you'll already feel really confident in all of the exams. Because as you will see and as you will know, there is a ton. I mean, just orthopedic diagnosis, there's over 300 and some different tests that you're required to know. And that's just for one of the three of the classes. So the point is you'll need to know a lot to be ready. Um, so what I'm doing now, I'll show you. And so I'll show you over here. We are going, I'm gonna be reviewing the chest, lung, and heart exam. This is not everything, but this is just some of the stuff that I'm required to know. So we got the heart and I got all the different tests that I can do, the chest and the lung. And just like I said, this isn't everything, but just the palpation, percussion, and auscultation. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through each bullet point and just go through everything. And then I got my little lab manual here that kind of will guide and direct me for directions and all the verbals that we need to know for the tests. And so what we are responsible for is not only know how to do each of the tests, but also know the positives and the indications. So I'm gonna spend about the next two hours going through this stuff and hopefully I get through it all. All right, so it turns out I'm pretty good with the chest, heart, and lung. I crushed all of that in about 15, 20 minutes. So now I'm gonna go over the knee, foot, and ankle. So I wrote out all the tests here and now I'm gonna run through all of these. So that you can emulate these qualities when you are the boss. 
So we break down the screening into four different sections. We have our greeting consult, then we go through some education, get them assessed, and then we have our dual close, which is where we get them scheduled for that first appointment. So I see you checked here that you have been to a chiropractor before, but I want to do a brief explanation of what we do in our office, just so we're on the same page. Okay. Okay. Call mom. Calling mom. Mobile. Hello? Hey mom. Hey! What's up guys? We are back at the apartment Wednesday night, about 10 p.m. almost, and uh, just getting some little last minute things done for the night before I head off to bed. But I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about the clinic preparation process because next quarter I'm gonna be in student clinic, which is super, super exciting as I'm finally gonna be able to uh, adjust patients at school and, and take care of people, which is gonna be really amazing and really awesome to see my progression as a doctor. Um, and, and one of the processes to get into clinic is to take the student clinic orientation where they, you meet with your clinic advisor and it literally prepares you for that clinic process. And so, and so you guys saw that little clip that we had earlier where we were all the students are gonna be in clinic, we're all jammed together at the clinic and what we're doing is we're breaking up into our small groups, it's called our unit. And my particular unit has about seven people in it. And we are working a lot with EHR, which stands for Electronic Health Records, really learning how to enter data into the system, how to properly perform the physical exam, and really just be able to process patients properly according to our system. So it's really a full doctor approach, everything from the history to entering an HPI to coming up with your first clinical impression to performing physical exam, to doing posture analysis, gait analysis, your full physical analysis and into actually treating and adjusting your patient. And so all of that's gonna get entered into your health records because you have to document everything that you do. And it's a long process to learn the database that we're using uh, for our online health records, but then it's another beast to learn how to properly enter them uh, for the system and especially in our clinic system. And so that's been a big thing that we've been doing in addition to our competency exam and as well for that clinical class that I'm in, all preparing me and are prerequisites for getting myself into the clinic phase. So the seventh quarter is really all about preparing myself to start thinking like a doctor. We took all of my basic science classes, still taking a few more science oriented classes, but now we're transitioning all of that into the real world of actually applying it in the clinical setting. So on that note, tomorrow morning, I have my entrance exam for my full spine three class, which is, an, is our first adjusting class on campus. And so basically we are proving ourselves that we are ready to begin adjusting here at school. And so that's going down tomorrow morning, as you guys might, assume I am more than ready to take it. So it's just exciting. It's really exciting to be at this part of the program and just to continue to see things evolve. So we're gonna get some sleep and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hey oh, so we just finished the full spine lab practical. We crushed it, yeah. I think we all crushed it. Everyone crushed it. All these people crushed it. Everyone did super well, so now we are officially ready to begin adjusting in class. It's been a long time waiting, but we're all really excited. You know what I'm saying, Matt? Matt's excited. I did well, so yes, I'm gonna break his neck. And good fit. Time to align some spines. What's up? We just got out of our board review class. Went really well. Good thing to uh, just review and, and kind of see where we're at. Uh, gonna go test out a girl for screenings. She's gonna go over some report of findings and uh, she's gonna crush it and that way she'll be ready to go out and uh, uh, screen for some docs, so should be good. And so when I come home, it's all too tempting to just be like, oh, I've been in class all day. I'm just gonna sit down and watch TV even though I don't have a TV and I don't actually lay on the floor like this, but it's all too tempting to want to sit down and relax and just take it easy. And I think there are some benefits to that, but at least for me, when I sit down, I get, ah, oh, 
a little bit too cozy, you know what I'm saying? And so then it ruins my momentum for the rest of the day. And guys, we got a lot of stuff planned. The day ain't over yet. So I wanna get my body moving. I've been sitting all day. And so instead of sitting and resting, because that's what I've been doing, I've been sitting all day, is I gotta get my body moving. So I'll do a little bit of exercise. I don't have enough time to go to the gym and do a full workout. So I'm gonna do a quick little circuit kind of thing just to get my blood flowing, get some exercise a little bit, work the muscles, work my body and then we can continue on getting some work done yeah and so I can just come up here and I can hang on this usually in the morning I like to just hang up here for like 30 seconds at a time and it just kind of stretches my spine gets my discs nice and hydrated but then you got to actually use it and start doing some pull-ups 88 89 oh, 200 and then once you're done with that so we're gonna get real crazy you can get down here and it can be like some abs, right? So you can kind of come up here and do some abs like this. You can do this, hug it to the chest, do some bicycles, get those abs moving. Maybe even do a few of the, uh, the suitcases. You can do a few of those. You can come back down here and then do a few push-ups. Oh, 90. And then what I want to do, since I am a chiropractor, I'm going to be, is uh, we can practice our adjusting. And so what I can do is I can practice my drops. So I got my table here and I can practice side posture drops, really dropping with my body, trying to get that force, recruiting those muscles. Boom, just like that. Boom, come at ya. Ready for an adjustment? Boom, healed from the foundation up, right? That's how you do it. <laughs> my patients are gonna look back at these videos one day and be like, <laughs> Who is this guy? Who is this crazy man that I'm letting touch my spine? But damn. But then, they're gonna say, you know what, I don't care, because he's a damn good adjuster. And you know how I got a damn good adjuster? Because I practiced. Boom! And so what I'm doing now is preparing for candidate training. And so I am teaching tonight, we're going over Gonstead uh, theory, which is essentially understanding the biomechanics and physiology and pathophysiology mechanism behind the work that we do. And so it's very intensive and goes in a lot of great detail. So I'm just reviewing a few things so that way I can give um, everyone there a great experience and hopefully they can come away with a lot. Um, and so what candidate training is, is it's an intensive uh, six month training program for those who want to take their skills as a doctor to the next level and become a Gonstead officer. And so up to this point, these guys have gone through club for at least six quarters and now they're in tier four where they're beginning their full case analysis and case management protocols. And so this is that next step to come to these trainings and to get that extra little bit of material that's gonna be needed, not just to take the Gonstead officer exam, but to become a Gonstead officer. So it got a kombucha with some ginger, kava, ashwagandha, and reishi added to it. And if you know anything about herbs and adaptogens, you know that this is gonna taste awful. And it does, but, but you know how they say, it's not about the taste, but it's about the quality of the energy that it produces, yes? So, back from candidate training, well after 9.30. Man, it went super well. It was, it was really cool to be able to teach this material that I had just learned uh, from last quarter and taking the officer exam. And so it's cool to be able to teach uh, the people that are coming in behind me. They're gonna do amazing. Uh, they did really awesome tonight. And uh, I think uh, I did my part in uh, teaching the material and they did their part in being awesome and learning, asking questions, and being engaged the whole time, which was uh, really, really awesome to partake in. So now we are back at the apartment. Got a little my teriyaki chicken and vegetables, just to uh, some good dinner uh, for the night. I haven't eaten dinner yet, uh, and just uh, reviewing for tomorrow. So tomorrow morning, I kind of got a mini quiz. It's not for points, but it's kind of more for like you wanna impress the teacher kind of thing for a clinical skills lab tomorrow. Um, and so I've pretty much, like I said, reviewed a lot of that beginning of the week. So just kind of gonna touch a little bit of base on that, but more gonna review for a quiz that I have tomorrow in our wellness and movement lab. And so a lot of that's really cool stuff. It's all about finding muscular imbalances and uh, really measuring the synergy in the body, just really looking at how the muscles are functioning in relativity to one another. 
a lot of different uh, physical analysis and exams that we can do for that. So hey, it's a pretty cool class. And yeah, tomorrow's Friday, man. This is the week. This is the grind. This is how it goes. So in the mornings, one thing I like to do is to get blood flowing, get my body moving. And so I'll do, you know, I'll have my pull-ups that I showed you. I can do like a similar type of circuit that I was showing you guys yesterday evening. Again, just whatever I can do to get my body moving in the morning. I also like to do a lot of stretches and just undo any tight musculature imbalances that I have. Um, and so for me, for example, I have super tight hip flexors just from sitting all day. And so I like to really just take a few minutes in the morning and stretch a lot of those out. So you can do a basic couch stretch like this. Um, I can also doing it laying down or even just sitting in a lunge position. Uh, just really try to lean back and stretch all this out. So I'll hold this sometimes for like up to a minute on each leg and I'll do that a couple times. And I just find that it keeps me limber, keeps me ready and keeps me going. It is Friday. We have reached almost the end of the week. Let's go. So my Fridays are pretty chill. I only have two classes, right? I have that clinical skills class and then the wellness class. Today's a little bit different because we have that quiz in the lab today, but usually it's really chill, like really chill. Um, and so I did that intentionally whenever I was scheduling out my classes. Uh, and so I'm maximizing this huge break, right? Because I have classes from seven to 11, right? And so I literally, after 11, I have my entire Friday ahead of me. And I know intuitively that if I just kind of say, awesome, I'm checked out on Friday, I'm gonna go home and just relax and chill, I know I'm gonna lose all that valuable time. And so I use that by, I'll stay on campus until about five, six, probably about five uh, most weeks, and I'll study for boards during that time. And so from about, you know, like 11, 12, I'll probably like start at 12 and go to about five. And so I'll put in a lot of my board prep during this time on my Fridays. So just got out of the wellness lab. We've done a lot of uh, different stretches and exercises that we can do, which is nice. The good thing about the wellness lab is it's at the gym. And so now that I'm done with classes, I get to come here and get a workout right after. So we got some weights over here, doing some deadlifts. Our athletics and physical sport, baby. You gotta train the body for it. So let's get it. So I'll show you guys why I ultimately decided to use a self-guided program uh, here. So this is the online program that I'm using to prep for boards, right? And so as you can see, it's very, very organized and I really like structure. I found that I need structure to study for something um, as large as this exam is. And so it has everything very nicely and neatly laid out, right? So you have all the parts of the exam, spinal anatomy, general anatomy, physiology, chemistry, pathology, and microbiology. And so then if I click on one of the sections, it'll come up here on the side, you see all of these different subsections, and it has all these different videos. The videos, there's what, there's 12 different videos in here. And then under each video, it has everything organized with the different sections that we're going over. And so I can kind of click on this. And so if I click on each section, there are all these videos for each section. So we got dermatomes. Here we got brachial arches, all the tracks, the peripheral nervous system and autonomic nervous system and all that. And so you got cranial nerves, osteology. And so it pretty much has all the different sections that we're gonna be tested on. And it's a very nice and organized format. And so it just, stays, it just makes things super easy for me. And so I also have this binder and so it comes with a complete workbook with all of the notes as well. And so under the section of spinal anatomy, these are all of the notes that come with it. And everything's already nicely organized and perfectly laid out. It even tells you the percent of questions that are under each section. And so that'll kind of prepare you just to let you know for how many questions are gonna be on under each section. There's even some different parts for you to write in some information um, as well in here. And so, like I said, there's some empty boxes and areas for you to write your own notes in. And so I think this is gonna work out very well for me. Just something that's very nicely neat, organized, gives me structure, but yet I can also 
work on it at my own time. And so that's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'd be really interested to hear what you guys wanna see in these weekly vlogs. So please leave your comments down below and I look forward to talking to you guys soon. Peace.